Hey guys, how you doing? Hope everybody is doing well. I am so sorry. I was over here sitting here and then it said go live and I'm like, oh, it's eight o'clock. I'm like, oh my God, let me take my glasses off because, you know, with, there, there's usually a glare when I have my glasses and stuff and I don't want like glares going on and everything. And I see Melo just left the room. I don't know what happened here. Melo, you don't want to say hi before we start? Come on. Say hi, Papa, because everybody always asks about you. Look at you. Look at that tail wagging. Yeah. So, guys, I hope you guys had a fabulous week. And I hope you guys can hear me and see me okay. I think you can because I would be seeing stuff in the chat saying, hey, I can't hear you, can't see you, and all that kind of stuff. So, I think we are good. Okay. So, I had a pretty busy week. Um, and while I talk to you guys this hour, I'm going to have my red wine. I'm having, a uh, Mer Merbeck, Malbec from Cooper's Hawk. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Cooper's Hawk. It's a nice place in, uh, in Virginia and I love their food. Oh my God. All their food is to die for. So of course I have my, um, uh, red wine and i am pouring this right through my aerator so that i can make sure i get all those nice uh juices from all the grapes salut okay so oh very good oh i love this wine i'm telling you mm. you know it's funny there was a time when i did not like white wine i mean red wine i only like white wine now it's opposite I'm not too fan of the of the white wine now i love my red and i'm having my um dark chocolate blueberry this goes really really good with red red wine so anyway all right enough about this let's get down to business okay so this week um i was working with a lot of local customers right and um one of the things that went through my mind was how some folks ask me, hey, how do you get your embroidery customers, right? So I said, you know what? Let me write down how I do it. And then also let me research some ways that people go and look for customers, how they find them and all that kind of stuff and everything. So get more ideas, right? So I figured, let me write them all down. And of course I have like three, three sheets. So I am going to talk a little bit fast because I know embroidery happy hour is supposed to be lasting one hour and I do talk a lot, okay, and stuff. But I have to admit, I think you guys kind of enjoy the talk. But anyway, but let's get down to business, okay? So embroidery, how do we get customers? Okay, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to start going down the list of stuff that I've written down, okay? Now, um, there are two ways that you can start selling embroidery, right? One way is one that a lot of you guys are familiar with is selling online. I usually sell on Etsy, but a lot of times people seem to always focus on Etsy. There are other avenues that you can take to also sell online. Etsy is not the only platform out there, okay? Now, some people like to do Shopify. The only thing that I'm not too um, crazy about with the Shopify is that you are kind of like in charge of bringing your own traffic to your site, right? One of the things that I really love about platforms such as Etsy, another one to think about is eBay, okay? Is they have a platform. They already have an audience. They already have people that go to their site to look for items, right? So all you have to do is actually just list your items and make sure that you list them in a way that when someone um, searches for that particular item, it's searchable and foundable, okay? I think I, I invented a new word, foundable. I, I know there's no such word, but I think you guys know what I mean. Anyway, so you just want to make sure that the items that you're selling are being found, right? So I like those platforms because the audience is already there, and you don't really have to spend a lot of time and effort in trying to get people to that particular site, as if you go and you do like a Shopify or you do a Wix, they have Wix also, um, but you have to bring the traffic. Now, is it impossible to bring your own traffic to your site? No, it's not. 
I mean, there are lots of ways that you can advertise your items. A lot of times people use Facebook. They use a lot of social media, like Instagram. People are using TikTok and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, you kind of have to be savvy on those kind of things, on those platforms. And you kind of like have to really spend time doing it, all right? Because if you don't, then what happens is nobody's going to know your site's out there, right? So, you know, so online is really um, something that, you know, is really, really popular. However, though, um, one of the things with doing it locally is it's not really a website that's talking for you. You're actually doing kind of like what you would do if you are using something like Shopify. You're, if you're, when you're selling locally, you're kind of in charge of bringing customers to you. Okay. Now, when I sell locally, usually I'm kind of found through word of mouth. But the thing is, in order for me to be found word of mouth, I had to put myself out there in some kind of way. So the way that I did it was, actually was my husband, was what happened was we were having um, lunch at the club and they had some kind of golf tournament. So my husband came on and said, hey, you have golf towels on your Etsy shop. Why aren't you advertising around the neighborhood. So I, it didn't dawn on me, you know, we live in a golf community. I mean, why not? So I said, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to be interested in it, but he said, post it out there. Just see. So I did. And next thing you know, I ended up with a whole bunch of people around my neighborhood that wanted to purchase personalized golf towels. As they purchased these golf towels from me, they quickly learned that I didn't just embroider golf towels, I was, I could embroider a lot of things. I can do logos and some of them around here on their own businesses. Um, I can do personalized book bags and a lot of their kids, you know, they, they go to school around here, right? And they, they have their lunch bags and the kids want their, their names on it. Um, so before you know it around the neighborhood, it kind of like, I kind of became known as kind of like the embroidery lady, right? So I wanted to expand a little more locally as well, though, because even though my name was getting out there in the community, I wanted it to kind of like go outside the community as well. So one of the things that I did was I registered my business on Google. So that way, if someone by me goes and does a search in Bordery by me, my business will pop up and my contact per, uh, information will pop up. Now, the website I, I use for that, I use my Etsy shop. And there's a reason why I wanted to use my Etsy shop. Well, first of all, I have close to 2,000 sales on my Etsy shop. And I have over 500 five-star reviews on my Etsy shop as well. So I looked at it as instead of building a whole separate website to display what I can do and to display you know, if people have purchased from me in the past and what kind of uh, customer reviews, if they go to my Etsy shop, they already kind of have an idea of the things that I sell and also how people felt about my products. So, you know, you have to try to um, think about, you know, when you are looking to buy, um, not to buy customers, but to find customers for your embroidery business, you kind of have to think to yourself, Am I, what platform am I looking for customers for? Am I looking online or am I looking local? If you're looking online and you're really brand new to this, okay, and you really are kind of limited in your knowledge of social media, you may want to choose a platform that already has an audience attached to it, just to start. Um, you don't have to stick to it. I mean, as you grow, you can create your own site and all that kind of stuff. But just to start, it, it may not be a bad idea. And if you want to do it locally, my suggestion is look for um, groups, community groups within your area. If you belong to a church or something like that, and see if you can start advertising some of your products to there. That way, people start to know who you are and what you can offer. OK, and before you know it, it will slowly grow. OK, now. When you're doing networking, right, and you start to, um, you know, sell locally, 
Well, a lot of times what happens is you're actually found through word of mouth because that is something that has happened to me. Sometimes I have, I will bump into a customer that isn't really living in my neighborhood, probably lives in the neighborhood next door or probably in the next town. And they just know someone that I worked for in the past. And next thing you know, it's, I got a reference, right? So that is another great way for you to get exposure to other customers out there, potential customers is really word of mouth, which is one of the reasons why I've even said in the past, every time you some, a, a product leaves your uh, facility, make sure that it's top notch because even though you're not there to talk about the stuff that you've embroidered and, and um, you know, created, that product is going to talk for you, okay? Because if you do shabby work, What's going to happen is, let's say you embroider a bean and you didn't embroider it great. You didn't use the right stabilizer. You didn't use the right thread. The, the embroidery just doesn't look good. It doesn't look crisp and stuff. Then what happens is when somebody's wearing it, most likely two things are going to happen. Either it's not going to get noticed much for the simple fact that somebody will notice it, but then they'll just be like, eh, it's just a hat. And they could probably come on and go, oh, the embroidery kind of looks uh, kind of like this, you know, but they'll probably think, oh, it's an old hat or something like that. Or they they may come out and say, hey, that, you know, who did your hat? I mean, did you just get that? Would you buy the hat? The embroidery looks a little, you know, whatever. So you don't want that. That is the one thing you don't want. What you want is that when you embroider something, when you embroider that beanie, you want it to be prestige. You want it to be top-notch quality embroidery because when that person is wearing it, you want the person to come out and go, oh, that's a nice hat. That is a really nice hat. Where did you get that hat from? Because that's going to start the conversation where the person is going to come out and say, oh, I had this hat custom made and this lady embroidered it for me. Oh, who, she does embroidery? Yes, her name's Jeanette. And before you know it, word of mouth, okay? And then one person is going to tell the other person and the other person and the other person, okay? So that is another great way of getting customers. So that's why I tell you guys, if you are doing this for a business, do not let things walk out of your shop that's half, you know, ASF. <laughs> Don't do that. OK, it has to be top notch because it's going to talk about you and you don't want it to say nothing negative. OK, now, the other thing is when you are out in public, OK, use that opportunity when you're in dinner parties or wherever to talk about your business. Use that opportunity, you know, say, hey, how are you? And somebody comes in and says, how are you? I'm doing great. I am really, really excited. I'm working really hard on my embroidery business and I got a lot of sales this week. I'm really super excited. Tell me about the sales you got. I saw a business owner and they needed a logo done for their shirt and I had it digitized and they love it. It, it was so much fun making that. Oh my God, I would love to make more. Talk about it. Be passionate about it. You don't know who's in, who else is in the room, they could be another business owner, okay, that needs some type of embroidery. Or they can hear you talking and then next thing you know, they go out somewhere and then somebody says, oh, I gotta get something embroidered. I know a lady that does embroidery. She was at the dinner party the other day. Next thing you know, boom, you found yourself a customer, okay? So be your own walking advertisement, okay? Wear your stuff too. Wear your stuff too when you go out and stuff like that. You know, I mean, if you embroidered a jean jacket, wear the jean jacket that you embroidered. Embroider a shirt. Wear it to the dinner party or or wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? Embroider your jeans. I saw, I think it was um, I think it was Robin. Robin embroidered a beautiful pair of jeans. Now I got a pair of jeans over here because now I want to embroider mine. Okay. So I mean, do such you know, there's so many things you can do. Be your own walking advertisement, okay? Because that is really what's going to help you get out there. You got to be passionate about your business. One of the things 
And it's very, very true about a lot of entrepreneurs that you see out there, okay? You, there is no break. There really isn't. Sometimes my husband's like, Jesus Christ, that's all you think about. That's right, because I'm passionate about it, okay? You're going to eat it. You're going to sleep it. You're going to poop it. Everything, <laughs> okay? Everything, all right? It's going to be all about the business, okay? I mean, there is a difference between people that just work the nine to five and then people that actually own a business. When you own a business, you're thinking about it all the time. You're thinking about it when you're sleeping. You think about it when you wake up. You think about it during lunch. You think about it during dinner. I mean, you're always thinking about your business. You're always thinking about how many orders you have, how many orders you have to fill. Um, you're always doing research. Where where can you buy your blanks at a lower cost? So that way you can um, profit better. You're always going to be looking for new designs. You're always going to be looking for ways to get more customers. You're always going to be looking for ways to expand the business. I mean, you're always, always thinking about it. When you have someone that is a nine to fiver, okay, what they do is they wake up in the morning, they go in, they clock in, when they clock in, they focus on the business, but then when they clock out, the business is not a thought. They don't think about it. They don't think about it because it's not theirs. It's not really theirs, right? But when it is your business, you're always, it's, it's, it's what you are. It becomes who you are. So you're always going to be thinking about it, okay? So use those opportunities when you are out there to talk about it. Why not? You're thinking about it. And people ask, how are you? Tell them how you are. Tell them how proud you are about the business, how it's growing, how you've learned new techniques and all that kind of stuff. You'd be surprised how many people are really interested in knowing. And then at the same time, while you're talking about it, not only are you showing your passion, you're also demonstrating your knowledge. So that is something that is also a plus, okay? Now, the other thing about um, finding customers is providing samples. Now, what I mean by samples is sometimes you could be having... Um, lunch at a place or going somewhere or you maybe a new business opened up um you may want to just take their logo have it digitized um but you may want to ask for permission first you know and tell them you know um because that's what i usually do is like you know i'll if there's a new establishment that opened up i may come out and say hey this is really cool and i'll come out and say you know i do embroidery on the side would you mind if i did a sample of your logo in embroidery so i could show it to you a lot of times they'll come out and say, no, I don't mind. And then I'll go, I'll get it digitized, and then I'll bring a sample. I'll bring a sample of a kitchen towel, or I'll just digitize the logo on a piece of fabric, cut around it, and just to show them the sample of the logo. And then I can come out and say, hey, I can do these on shirts. I can do them on aprons. I can do them on um, polos, um, jackets, um, tote bags, you know, and just give the manager the, the, the sample and um, give them your business card. You would be surprised you could get a call back. I have gotten call backs that way, okay? So, sometimes I have it, sometimes I have, and but you don't know. And let me tell you, to me, some people say, well, Jeanette, sampling is a lot of work. Well, you know, owning a business is a lot of work, okay? Getting customers is a lot of work, so you got to do it. And this is another thing I want to tell you. When we're talking about the samples and you're taking that logo and you get it digitized and you're embroidering, you're practicing. That's what you're doing. You're practicing your craft. You're excelling it. You're making it better. You're making it more prestige because that sample that you're going to give them is going to be a good one. Okay. Now, you know, now that I mentioned sample, I got to tell you a story about my mother, okay? I know Nancy's on probably on the chat. But I didn't talk to Nancy about this, but I was talking to my mother. I'm sorry, I had to get chocolate. Y'all going to laugh at this. Back in the day, and I think this was before me and my sister were born, my mom used to work at a factory that sold, right? And that's back in the day. We're talking about when 
the jobs were actually here where people had factories and they were sewing. So my mom told me that a lot of times um, her boss would go up to her and he would say, Carmen, this is a sample. So it needs to be perfect. So my mom would say, okay, no problem. So she would sew the sample, come out perfect. Then when the order would come in, she said she would just sew it, zoom, 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 you know? And then she made me laugh because she said there were a couple of times where she missed a couple of stitches. And then after she sewed it, she would give it to a lady. The lady wouldn't inspect it. So the lady would come out and go, Carmen. And my mom would go, oh, just pass it. So I started laughing when she told me that because I was thinking to myself, are they doing that with my baby blankets that I ordered from China? I hope not, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I thought it was funny when she told me that. Because then, I, you know, she told me that after I told her that I needed her to come visit so she could help me because I was sewing the labels on my towels. And she said she was going to help. And then after she told me that story, I told her, no, that's okay. You don't have to help. Because I could just see the labels falling off. Anyway. So, talked about leveraging your network, okay? And I mean, talking about talking to people and all that kind of stuff. And we also talked about sampling, okay? How you can use sampling. The other thing, too, is, and I don't use this, but this was something that I found during my research, which I thought was really, really cool. They said use referral programs which means you offer an existing customer a discount at their next order if they refer a new customer to you that produced in a sale. Now, I thought about this and I was thinking to myself, you know, I know I've done referral programs, like I do that with the cashback program and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'll, I'll refer to you guys because I know that, you know, you guys sign up, you'll get some money and, and then I get money too. But at the end of the day, we all saving because we're buying discounted gift cards, right? So, you know, I thought that was a pretty good, good thing about referral programs. But to me, I was kind of like, but that's kind of something that I would do a little bit later, right? But it was just something that I found out when I was doing my research. The other thing, though, and this is something that I do, okay, is avoid customers that waste your time. Um, one of the things that I notice a lot is when you do, you know, you'll get a lot of customers that'll come out and they'll show some interest, but then what ends up happening is they're kind of slow. Now, I don't know if it's the New Yorker in me, because I'm just one of those that it's like, okay, we want something, what do you want? Let's, let's get the requirements right now. Let me invoice you, send me the payment, let me get to work, here you go. I'm like that. I'm like, bang, bang, bang got a process. However, though, there have been times when I will have a customer reach out to me. They got all these questions. I don't mind that. I don't mind the questions. The more questions, the better, because then we are managing expectations, right? You're asking me questions. I'm providing you answers. So that way we can make sure that we are legit. Okay. However, though, the thing that annoys me is when I, they ask the question, I give them the answer and then I'm like, okay, and next thing you know, it's like a whole day passes by or two days pass by. Then you don't hear anything. Well, to me, it's not that it's a bad customer, but to me, it's a customer that is not ready. Okay. They're not ready to make the purchase. So I usually, not that I put them in the back burner, but I don't really focus on them until they know they are ready. Okay, because what could happen is you could waste a lot of time. There have there are I have had customers where they ask the questions, I give them the answers, and then all of a sudden it's like you don't hear from them for a whole month or two. I don't have time for that, you know, I don't know, this site no. I got a business to run. Okay. I gotta make money, I wanna produce products, and um, this is what I love to do. So what I like to do is I just Right off the bat, the first question I like to ask people right off the bat, well, okay, when do you need this box? That's what I ask. Right away, when they answer that question, I know right off the bat, 
is there are serious or not. Because they'll come out and they'll tell you, I need it next week or need it. Right there, you got a deadline. Okay, fine. You got a solid deadline. This is the time that you need. Fine. And then I just lay it out. Well, in order for me to get it for you by that date, we need to get this digitized. It takes this much time. We need to approve it. We need to talk about color threads. And then I start setting out the schedule, okay? And say, this is how it's got to roll in order for us to meet that deadline that you got. So you can make sure that you walk out of here with your product in hand. If they tell me, um, oh, I don't need it till next month, then I'll come out and I'll say, okay, well, what questions do you have for me now? Because maybe you should reach out to me when you're closer to that deadline, no more than two weeks out, okay? Because if you're going to place the order within a week, let's say you put it in an order, and you're telling me you need 50 shirts and you need it in two days. Well, can I do it? Probably. But you know what? Uh, I'm going to be working really, really hard to meet that deadline. So there's going to be a rush for me to that. So I just let them know right up front and say, you need to at least notify me two weeks out. That way we can work through the process. So make sure you manage that, you know, because there's going to be a lot of customers out there that, they're, you know, and, and I don't want to say they're wishy-washy and stuff like that. I don't want to say that because they are legit customers. And sometimes, let's be honest, okay? Sometimes customers don't know honestly what they want, all right? Some, you know, they'll ask you for suggestions on color changes, you know, on, on color threads. I sometimes am not very comfortable answering those type of questions because I tell them this is a custom item. Because think about it, embroidery is custom. So sometimes giving them your own um suggestions i mean like i know what my favorite colors are you know and i'll tell them well i know i've had customers in the past that have used these colors but i prefer for you to pick your own because you're the one at the end of the day that has to be happy with them okay so that's usually how i do i even have people on my etsy shop sometimes come on and say i want to buy this but i don't know what color and then i'm like okay so what I, I'll usually do, especially if it's a gift for someone, I'll say, well, do you know what their favorite color is? And then I'll try to help guide them to make the, uh, a decision that 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 they feel comfortable with. But a lot of times I tell them up front, you know, I mean, it's not for me, it's for you. You know, I can give you some ideas of what might work. Let me do some samples to, so that you feel more comfortable in the colors you choose, you know? So, I mean, but the thing is, just know that when you are selling locally and you know even sometimes online this can happen too you could end up getting some customers that they're just very uncertain about the choices that are out there because let's let's be honest and let's be real um you know embroidery is a very custom thing i mean it's very very custom so i mean it, it is natural for some people to kind of be a little on the wishy-washy of how they want, you know, making decisions on the color threads and how big and how small and all that kind of stuff. So you got to, you got to be patient. You got to work through them on that. Okay. And stuff, but you got to be careful that you don't really get so involved that before you know it, you spent like a whole week with this customer and nothing came out of it. So, you know, that's the first question I ask right off the bat. When do you need this line? And that gives me an indication of how further I should go in the consultation with them. Okay. Now, um, the other thing that you may want to do is look at your competitor. Okay. Look to see who by you is also doing that same type of embroidery, not just locally, but online as well. Now, a lot of people probably like don't, you know, I don't know. Some people may get mad that I might say this, that you got to look at your competitors. But let's get, look, come on, you have to, okay? You got to see what is out there, what is selling and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to the local stuff, I will tell you this. I deal a lot with small businesses. I don't sell a lot of embroidery like I do online online i sell like dinner napkins and 
kitchen towels, stuff that I've already designed with things and stuff like that. They kind of sell as is, right? But when it comes to the local sale, it's a whole different audience that I'm kind of selling my embroidery services to. Those are usually small business owners, and they usually have their own business logos that have to get digitized. And then I have to work with them and get picking their shirts. And a lot of times what I usually do too, that's the other thing too, is when you are dealing with local sales, I'm not into the inventory thing. That's not my thing. I don't want a whole bunch of clothes all over my house. I don't. So what I usually do is I refer the customer to certain sites where they can buy their uh, their blank. Okay. A lot of times I like doing that because it's kind of like sharing some insider information with the customer. Okay. They get to control how much they spend on that item. If you were to go ahead and you were sell the shirt with the importer, right? Like let's say um, a business comes to you and says, hey, this is my business logo and I want to uh, you know, have it done on some polos. And you have to come out and then you have to provide the polos. <coughs> Excuse me. Chances are what's gonna happen is you're gonna go online, you're gonna order all those polos and when they come in, you're going to have to do a markup. And that's a markup on the item that you just acquired because of course it did take time. You had to go online, you had to order them, you had to receive them, you had to check them. It's a whole lot of stuff, okay, that goes, that's a service just to get the, sh the shirts. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you got the other part of the service, which is the embroidery. So you're going to have to take their logo. You're going to have to get it digitized. You're going to have to test out the file, okay? You don't just get it digitized and the person gives you the file and you go, oh, okay, thank you. And you just put it on the shirt. No, you don't do that. What you have to do is you have to work with the digitizer. That's why I always say it's very important to find a digitizer that you feel very, very comfortable with that you can work with. Not one of these digitizers where you send the file and you pay, and they just send you a file back, and it, and that's it. The relationships end it. I don't like that. I don't like working like that. Okay, <clears throat> I like to get to know the people that I am working with when I'm digitizing. Okay, I send them the file, I pay them, they send me the file back, I test stitch it. Okay, some modifications need to be made. I send it back. I let I show a picture of how it's stitched out and I say, hey, this is, you know, it has to be stitched out for this particular weight of thread. This is the brand that I'm using. This is the material that is being, um, you know, embroidered on. A good digitizer, a truly good digitizer, okay, will want to know all that information. They're not just going to grab your picture and digitize it and send it back to you. They're going to ask you the questions of what size, what type of thread, what type of material you're going to be doing, you're going to be embroidering on, because that is how they're going to know how to properly digitize that logo, that image. So that way, when you go ahead to embroider it on that fabric, on that material, it's going to come out really, really good. So it's very, very important. I mean, a lot of people overlook that. They just think, oh, let me just, uh, here's a digitizer, send them the file, and that's it. No, you got to, you you have to, and this is the other thing that I tell people, don't select one. Get more than one digitizer. I have a list of digitizers that I work with. They are all fabulous. I love them all because if something's wrong, I can go back. And, and I have my favorite, okay, but I also have my backups because, he is my favorite and I know he's very, very busy. And if I have something that has to be done and he just can't do it, he can't give me a one or two, two day turnaround, I may have to use digitizer two, three or four in order for me to get the work done. So I'm telling you the relationship between you and the digitizer is very, very important. You gotta make sure that you're working with somebody that you can trust and you can have that good communication going back and forward with. Okay, 
So anyway, um, oh, what the hell was I talking about? So I got all passionate about the digitizer. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> uh, make sure you're looking at your competitors. Make sure that you see how they are doing, you know, how they're doing, what they're selling, um, what their pricing is, okay? Because you don't want to outprice yourself, okay? If you have, you know, and, and that's the other thing too. A lot of people come out and say, how do you price your items? Look at your competitors. Um, someone in California will have different prices than someone that lives in Virginia. Someone in Virginia is going to have different prices than someone that's in Minnesota or someone that's in Florida. You have to come out and you have to do your research, do your research locally and stuff like that. Look at online embroidery services too. See how they price their items, okay? And see how you compare. The reason why I say you want to do this is because if you have someone that is local, that is just as good as you, and they come out and they say, hey, I can embroider a shirt for $25. And then you're telling customers, oh, I'm going to do it for $60. Well, guess what? Chances are you may get one or two customers, but you may not end up getting repeat customers because people are going to be like, her prices are so jacked up high and, and, and hers are lower, um, but it's just good quality. It's just as good quality. So why? Why go to the one that's that's high end? You know what I mean? So you want to look at your competitors. You want to see what their pricing is. You want to see what kind of products they're offering and stuff so that you can see where you fit in and all that stuff in, in, in this um, this embroidery world, okay? Um, also, you want to look at your, uh, your customer's profile, all right? Now, what I mean by that, is you want to look at the audience that you're going to be embroidering for, okay? So if you're going to go out there to find customers, you got to know what customers are you looking for. So when you know the customers that you're looking for, that's when you're going to know what your target area is going to be. For example, some kids, some people like to do children, right? They like to do children's shirts. They like to do um, <clears throat> children hats um children blankets and all that kind of stuff well if you're going to be doing that you need to target that audience okay targeting um you know uh i don't know targeting a basketball team is not going to help you sell the baby product okay but if you target a maternity ward or if you target a school okay or you target a nursery or you know local babysitters and stuff like that or maybe work with a local photographer that does baby pictures and stuff like that that will help you get your name out there so you can gain customers right so you have to know what audience it is god it's hot in here i think it's the wine you got to know what customer you know, you are looking to get, all right? And then that is where you're going to look for your target area. Once you hit your target area, that's when you're going to go to the next step. That's when you're going to be thinking to yourself, okay, how am I going to advertise my target area? This is the other thing too. When you are advertising your target area, you want, that's when the networking comes in, okay? So you want to start talking to people in that area and you want to start introducing yourself in there come up with flyers that's when you come up with your business cards okay and the other thing too is help spread your word also be approachable okay people like forming relationships with people that they do business with right that is so important you don't want to be one of those that say okay here you go, here's the money, whatever, bye, I never wanna see you again. Form the relationships, all right? Get, have, let your customers know who you are, okay? Because that's going to form trust and it's also gonna help you get repeat customers. Now, one of the things that I always like to do is I always like to do this. I like to give people this, okay? Now, there's a reason. Here I have the back of my little story, okay, of how I started and everything. And then here I give this little thank you card and it tells them about the channel. 
Now, there's a reason why I do this. I do this because it helps, it helps the customers not just, you know, know like, oh, I came, um, you know, she, she has a little small embroidery business. I have a small business. She did my logo. It came out great. But they get to know you as a person, right? She, they could go ahead and they could check out the channel and they could be like, wow, she's really passionate about what she's doing. She doesn't just do this. She helps other people. I mean, she's, you know, they get to know you. They really do. They get to know you want to form that relationship. And, you know, I even have made more sales doing that. Okay. Like there was a lady, her daughter was in a swim team. They have their own little swim jacket. So she wanted her name embroidered on the swim jacket. So I did it. I gave her this card. The lady was like, oh my God, I'm sure other people may want to do your name on their swim jacket. I said, here you go. Let me give you more of the cards. So I gave them the little cards, these little cards that I have right here, little business cards. Okay. I said, here you go. Just in case someone else. So I gave her like five of them, just in case someone else wants them. Right. And then she was like, oh, I watched the, the YouTube channel. Before you know it, I ended up getting a lot of people over here with these swim jackets. Every, every You know, they were like, oh, do you have different fonts? Absolutely, different fonts. I had emails flowing in and I was saying, okay, because, you know, sometimes kids, they don't want the same thing, right? Especially like girls, you know, like they, they like the script, but it's like, you know, they want, they, they kind of want the same thing, but it's not like the same thing. So I had to come up with different scripts for the boys. Um, the boys really didn't care much. They were like, oh, I just want block. So like New, uh, Times New Roman was good for all the boys. Boys really don't care too much about that. Girls, on the other hand, they kind of do. You know, they kind of like some wanted the swirly script. Some, some wanted script, but not too swirly. Some wanted the nice, uh, you know, fancy kind of looking, uh, you know, uh, print. You know, they didn't want like script, but they wanted like a print, but it was like, uh, you know, different, you know. So the girls were a little more like, oof. And, and, and then what was so funny too was some of them were asking me, what did, what did, uh, what did Cynthia get? What did Victoria get? And so I guess I would have to show them because they were like, well, I don't want the same one they got, you know. So they were kind of like more picky, but that's okay. But um, it was actually kind of funny and fun to do. So, um, but the thing is, you know, get, when customers get to know you, they build a trust with you. And before you know it, they bring customers to you. So form those relationships with them, okay? Form the relationships. Stay in touch with them. Stay in touch with them. Let them know, hey, you know, you bought a, uh, a, a baby blanket from me, okay? Okay. Just want, you know, I wanted to reach out, let you know I got some new designs on the site in case you want to check them out, you know, because you never know, you know, I mean, you just want to, you know, build that relationship and everything. So let me see, what else did I write in here? Okay. Um, also, okay, well, I said problem solving, okay? You want to solve uh, problems with your customers. Now, what I mean by problem solving is what I was kind of talking about earlier. Man, it's hot in here. It's all these lights. What I was talking to you guys about earlier, like how sometimes a customer, they they know what they want, but then they kind of don't. I think this wine gives me energy. Anyway, it's so good too. Anyway, um, what I mean by is, let me see, let me think about this. Okay. SK Customs. There's a, a gentleman who um, had an event coming up, right? And but he wanted different shirts, right? So he went shopping, and what he did was, you know, um, he he wanted his logo embroidered on the shirts, but he wasn't too sure about the shirt. So I texted him, then I said, "Look, when you go to the store, take a picture of the ones you like." And I'll give you thumbs up, thumbs down, right? So what he did was he went there, he went to Cabela's and he picked up some really nice shirts, but then he also picked up some shirts that had like the plaid design on it. So what went through my mind was plaid and an embroidery logo, that's not gonna mix because too busy, 
right? You, you know, when you're doing a logo, you kind of want a plain background because you want that logo to pop, okay? You don't want nothing competing with your name. So that's what I mean when I say problem solving. Sometimes customers do need that little extra help. And what's really great is when you do provide that extra help, trust me, customers don't forget that. They really don't, okay? The reason why they don't forget it is because they know how you went over and beyond to make sure that they were happy and that they got what they needed. That's really, really important, okay? How many times have you experienced where you walked into a store and you had to take like 20 minutes to find somebody to help you? You know, it's like, you don't want that. You want the customers to know that they can come to you with, um, with an idea and maybe they just need that extra little help, okay? And you're willing to help, okay? So, you know, that's what I mean by the problem solving. You want customers that are, you know, you know, to know that if they they want something, you'll work with them. You can help make that that dream that they have a reality as much as possible. You'll work with them in trying to find that right color. You'll work with them in trying to find the right shirt and stuff like that. So that is really, really important. The other thing that I put in here was communication about services and your offers, okay? A lot of times when you meet customers, okay, or when you're talking about your business to potential customers, okay, because you're looking for customers and stuff. A lot of times when people say, what do you do? You do embroidery. There was, uh, they don't, they, they know what you do, but at, at the same time, they don't know what you do. And I'm going to tell you how, what, what I mean by that, okay? On Facebook, um, on our community website, I told you how I had posted these golf towels and I went ahead and I just put like personalized golf towels and people loved it, right? Well, a women's club came and I did their logo, right? And I put it on their polos and everything. So I posted the picture of all the polos. Someone commented on there and they said, wow, I didn't know you could do that. What does that tell you? It tells you that they knew that I knew embroidery, but that particular person had no idea that I was able to take images, get them digitized, and actually embroider them for organization. Even though I'd done it for some people, she wasn't aware of that. And her husband has a hunting club, and he was looking for someone to do that. Then next thing you know, me and her exchanging messages. She's sending me the logo. There you go. Found another customer. Okay. So a lot of times when you are talking about your business, don't just say, yeah, I have an embroidery business and just make it very vague. Talk about the different services that you provide. I can digitize uh, logos. I, I, you know, I do shirts for small businesses. I can do the scrubs for nurses. I can do doctor jackets. I can do bags. I can do lunch bags. I can put monograms. I can do uh, names. I can do blankets. I can do hats. I can do beanies. You know, People sometimes don't register it, okay? They just looked at that one thing that you did and they think that you're limited right there, that there that's it. You don't you, you don't do the other stuff. And so make sure that you talk about that. Make sure that you make that known. You have to share that information because remember you are the walking flyer. Okay, you know how some people, they go ahead, they have a business, they'll go to all the mailboxes and they'll put the little flyer in the mailbox and stuff. You can do that too, but you're the talking flyer. You're the one that goes in the room and you are happy about what you do. So when people say, hi, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I am having a great time with my business. I just did this, 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 this. I love it. I love it. And now I've expanded, I've been doing more services. I'm doing all kinds of services, this and that, whatever, you know? It's who you are, it's, it's who you are. You know what I'm saying? So trust me, advertise it, word of mouth. Word of mouth will get you those customers, okay? 
The other thing um, is that I had put on here was the power of the internet. Power of the internet. Just like I said, I just posted those golf towels out there. Next thing you know, everybody in the community knew I was doing golf towels. Before you know it, the golf towels that I started doing logos and all that kind of stuff and everything. Use Facebook, use Instagram, use TikTok, use all the social media that is out there. You know, all you have to do is just put the name of your business and put a picture of it. You know, I mean, just put stuff out there. Make yourself known, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you something. I am not exactly like social media queen, okay? I'm not very familiar with the TikTok or the Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Even Liliana reached out to me and she tried to help me a little bit. And I got to be honest, I kind of forgot what she taught me. So I got to reach out to her again and teach me again. Um, my sister is a little better at it than I am, but she got her husband to help her. So her husband is really good at that. My husband is way too busy. There's no way that Fred can really, you know, as much as he supports me in, in all, all the things, he doesn't really have the time. He has a very, very stressful job and he is always on it. Okay. And when he is off work, I like to leave him alone because he really needs that distress that time to de-stress and, and just focus and, you know, take care, of him, you know, because I actually love that man. I want to live a long, long time. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I don't bother him with this because I know he needs his time. So, um, you know, I have to do this on my own and, and I'm good with that, you know, um, and stuff, but I have, I know I do have to, me personally, I have to get smarter on, I gotta get smarter on QuickBooks. Okay, I just transferred my data from QuickBooks self-employed to QuickBooks online. Now I have to get really smart on that. And I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and um, I'm gonna have to hire a manual full-time. He does my taxes on a yearly basis, but I already reached out to him and I told him I'm gonna have to hire you full-time so you can do my books because um, he does help me with that and I had everything straight in self-employed but then when i transferred everything to quickbooks online kind of like screwed it up so i think i might need him to help fix it i know he'll he'll take care of me but he'll probably give me that look but anyway all right um the other thing too that i wanted to uh talk talk about some of the things that i i i saw when i started doing research on looking for customers and all that kind of stuff is stuff that you should do whenever you are meeting a new customer okay uh, create a presentation. Like one of the things that I do is when I stitch out um, people's logos, I always stitch them out on a piece of fabric and then I keep them in like a little book. And then when I meet with a customer and they say, hey, have you worked on uh, logos for businesses and stuff like that? I give them that book so they can look at some of the samples of my work. Um, that is really a good way to you know to really um you, when you're meeting a customer for the first time for them to really get to know you and the quality of your work so always carry around little samples with you so that people could could see what you do all right um the other thing also is when you meet new people that are potentially uh new customers answer their questions quickly okay um, that is not the time for like you to like start slacking, like, you know, like, oh, I'll get back to you on that. No, um, I'm one of those that you ask me a question, I got the answer. Now, first of all, remember, if embroidery is your bread and butter and you know this, this stuff in and out, you should be able to answer these questions right on the spot, okay? If they come on, then they say, hey, what about color thread? Yes, I can use a 40 weight thread. This is the brand of thread I use. These are my, my color cards. What type of red do you want? Um, this is my time frame. Remember, this is your business. So you should know your schedule inside out. There shouldn't be no, oh, I'll get back to you later. You should know right then and there, okay? Um, and you should always have your calendar with you, okay? So you should be able to answer questions quickly. The person who really is going to take time answering some certain questions will be the customer. It should not be you, okay? Because... You the like for instance, I'll give you an example of a conversation. So how when do you when do you need these shirts by? Well, I need them in two weeks. Okay, do you know the type of shirts that you're going to have your logo embroidered on? 
there may be a pause right there. Do you know why? Several things. One, the customer didn't get the shirts yet. Okay, so with conversation will probably be like, well, um, I have an idea. Or if the customer has the shirts, then it should be a quick answer. It should, they should come out and say, oh, yes, I know the shirts. This is the brand. This is it. I have the shirts right here. Okay, great. All right. Well, then you'll look at it right away. You could tell them, okay, in these two sheets of, of, of cutaway stabilizer, this is how many, um, I'm going to have it digitized. I'll get back to you in two days, okay? Because that's usually what I do. I tell them, no more than three days will you hear back from me with your digitized item. So I already have a list of digitizers that I work with. So right away, as soon as they, you know, they say, okay, I always like to do the sample. I always like to do the sample because I want the customer to see what they're going to get. Okay. Now, the, um, the cost of the embroidery of digitizing, I incorporate that in the cost of the sale. Okay. If I don't make the sale, I'll eat the cost. But the thing is, um, some people come out and say, well, Jeanette, well, you had to pay for the digitizing. Well, first of all, digitizing for small logos, we're talking about 10, 15 bucks. However, though, I don't look at that as waste money wasted, and I don't think you should either. What you should be doing is looking at that as an opportunity for you to practice your skills. And guess what? If they you don't make the sale, well, guess what? Well, you know, you take that well that that thing, you put it in your little uh, pamphlet, okay? and that way when you're meeting potential customers, you say this is a customer. So that's usually how some people they get upset. They're like, "Oh, I took the time for it, and then I never got the book." Or not? You got to practice, right? Because remember, in order to eat, you have to cook. Not just the time for the craft and stuff. You know, I don't. I have a problem with the word craft. The problem that I have with the word craft is that I feel like it's more like a hobby, right? Um, in order to can be a hobby. But for me, it's not. For me, you know, it is something that I love to do, and it can be a hobby. But right now, it's business. It's business for me, okay? I gotta make sure that my embroidery is top notch on everything I do. Okay? All right? But if not, my poor son, Carlito, would be sitting on the phone, right? So I got to pay for that college book. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's a business. It's a business. So, you know, that's just how I do it, right? So, um, that's what I mean by answering questions for me. If you can understand you know what you're doing, you can know everything that you're doing and out. This is your place, okay? So, don't, you know... You should not be slacking on answering the questions. You should know right away, okay? So that's all I'm saying. Um, oh, my audio is coming in and out. Oh, boy. Okay, hopefully. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better and stuff. Um, you're on pause. I can't understand you. Is the wine or the audio? It could be the wine. <laughs> Audio is so bad. Oh, man. All right. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me okay? It's all good. Okay. It was the wine, guys. It was the wine. Let's see what's on the wine. Like I said, this red wine is Okay. Turn it on with this All right. Got it. Let's just say. I will never see what's on this <laughs> That was bad. I always felt bad. All right. Now, another thing. Quality sales tool. What, what do I mean by quality sales tool? What I mean is when you are making the sale, when you make it, okay, it's bad again. Oh, man. Don't tell me. Okay. Man, how am I going to do this? All right. 
It sounds muffled. What am I doing? Okay. I'm not touching anything. Maybe did, is it better now? I moved the laptop closer. Sound better? It's better again. Okay, maybe what it is is that I'm moving the laptop and somehow it's doing something. Okay, but, all right. I'm not moving the laptop anymore. Yes. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay. All right. Now, quality sales tools. What do I mean by that? All right. We're talking about the app. We're talking about the advertising. Okay. I'm also talking about how you can support your customers when they need to stop. This is important. Okay. Never make the assumption. Must be your wife. I can't wear a wig. This is my wife. So it happens when you move back. Okay. All right. I'm lip. I'm lip. Okay. When you are closer, it sounds better. All right. I'm going to Now. What I'm talking about is when you can support your customers, even when they need to stop. And I'm talking about being good. See how I have to share instructions, right? A lot of times, you know, move the laptop to the other side. Wait. up. You doing better? No? Oh, it's kind of helpful. Oh, no. I can't find my AirPods. Oh my God. Okay, where are they? Oh, I got this. You you think this might work? What if I use my beats? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna see if I can use this. Now it sounds good. But I don't know. I don't think this is yeah. on. It does. It does? Don't, don't, don't move the laptop. Don't move the laptop? Okay. Fred to the rescue. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, guys. You guys put in the chat if it sounds funky. Okay. Um, good. Okay. I'm not moving the laptop for some reason. This is the spot. This is where it's going to stay. Okay. All right. Quality sales tools. Okay. Like I was saying. All right. Now, you got to take care of your customers when they leave. We always make the assumption. Okay. I know I did. That people know how to take care of their items after they get them. Okay. A lot of times people don't. And what ends up happening is... They wash them, they put them in the dryer, they don't know how to properly iron them and all that kind of stuff. Make, sh make sure that you give them care instructions. This is important, okay? Remember, 
you you want the customer to keep coming back you want the customer to really um you know enjoy the product that you made and not only that that product remember that's your walking advertisement that product is what's going to speak about you when you embroider somebody's hat when you do the logo on their shirt it's got to look nice okay so then when they go out there and even though they've washed it 10 15 20 times you want that embroidery to look nice and crisp so a lot of people don't know how to take care of it. So if they don't know how to take care of it, this is going to help them. All right. So make sure that you go ahead and you give them instructions on how to take care of their embroidered items. The other thing also is um, ask the customers to give you reviews. OK, I do this on my Etsy shop all the time. You buy something from me. After I see that that item got delivered, I actually send a notification to that person to say, hey, I saw you got your item. Thank you so much for buying from me. And I would really appreciate it for you to leave me a five-star review. If you have any questions or any concerns, reach out to me. Make sure that you ask for the review. And you know what? Don't be afraid of the bad review. Don't be afraid of it. If you don't know what you're doing wrong, you're not going to be able to do that. So, you know, just everybody loves to hear the good stuff, but don't be afraid of the bad stuff. Because if somebody tells you something, it's so that you have an opportunity to improve the weight. Okay? Now, man, oh, God. All right. So, ah, that just, I just a lot of that. I was going to tell you. All right, let me see if, all right, so let me go down here. All right, uh, the other thing, too, okay, that again. Oh, audio is funky again. All right, okay, my audio's funky. All right, all right, Jeanette, I believe it's a wire connecting into your laptop. Check that. Wire. I don't have a, well, I have my, I have my, uh, battery. That's the only thing I have. Does it feel better? Does it look better? Um, how do you know if a purchase was made from your Etsy shop? Marlene, you'll see it, um, on your Etsy orders. Okay. That's how, that's how you see it. And so do you guys hear me? Okay. Better. Does this sound better? Because I just unplugged the laptop and stuff. Um, let me see. Looks like I got the five bars and all that kind of stuff. All right. Okay. Little yes. All right. Man, this is challenging. See, it's hard when you do live, man. Every time you do live, there's always something. You never know what issues you're going to have and stuff. I remember when I was at my mom's house and I said I had all that stuff going on and everything. Man, I'm really going to be drinking this bottle tonight. Okay. Mm. Okay. Also, another thing, follow up with lost clients. Okay. Let's say that you did a, a job for somebody, right? Haven't heard from them two, three months. Send them a note. Say, hey, how you doing? I just wanted to reach out and see if you still, um, if you like the product that I imported for you, you know, if you have any questions. Let them know you're still around. Nothing wrong with that, okay? And stuff. Um, and let me see. I'm almost at the end anyway because it's 9 o'clock. Yep, good. Uh, let me see. What else I put? I talked about speaking at conferences also. You know, that's another good way to do that. I don't do that too much. I guess you could tell my – I guess maybe my embroidery happy hour is my conference time. I guess that you can say that. Let me look on here. I just got something in two minutes. I believe it's the wire that's connecting. I already got that. Got Miss Banks. It happens when you lean back. Something wrong with Nancy said something wrong with my sound. Oh, it's life. It's life. I tell you, life. It's like getting a bird's nest in your multi-needle machine. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Looks like I'm I'm back in the game. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Is it? Yep. Everybody's saying that everything's good now. All right. Cool. Well, I got most of everything on there. Um, you know, uh, the other thing too is just the 
don't have a sale, what I end up doing is I create new stuff. There are times when I sometimes um, kind of doubt my own capabilities and all that kind of stuff. We've all been there. Okay. We all done it. Um, I think you better call it a night until you figure out the audio uh, much better. Okay. Um, we all have our moments. Okay. The bottom line is just don't give up. That's all I want to tell you guys. Build your confidence. You got this. You can do it. Don't, you know, don't think that, you know, you're not going to be able to um, succeed. This is going to take time. Everybody's business takes time to build. Nothing happens overnight. All right. So what's important is that you don't give up. You keep trying. You go out there and you do your thing. You will get there. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people, sometimes they get discouraged because they say, oh, I don't get enough sales in Etsy or, you know, or I, you know, I don't know how to um, reach out to people um, locally and all that kind of stuff. You're going to get there. It takes time. Just don't give up. That is really the most important thing of everything. Okay. Believe in yourself, do your thing, love what you do, keep at it, and it's going to it's gonna turn out okay at the end. And if you really want a little truth, what is the very worst thing that can happen out of this whole situation? You want to know what the worst thing can happen? Your whole family and all your friends will be walking around with a whole bunch of embroidery gifts. So is that a bad thing? No. So just do your thing, believe in yourself, and you guys are going to be okay. So I am going to go down the list, okay, um, because I always like to say hi to everybody, and I always like to answer all the questions and everything. I know we're having audio issues, which kind of sucks, but you know what? Let's think positive. The audio, hap the, the problems with the audio happened at the end of Embroidery Happy Hour, so I'm sure you guys got most of this information. So I'm going to go down there and that you guys, oh man, as always, but thank you guys for texting and all that. Thank you 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 for texting and all that. 
Sandy, hey Bobby, and Elma, hey Carol, how are you, and Jack, I mean Bob, how are you, Pizza, and the scattered Bob and Jackie, hey Brenda, how are you, Bridget, hey Classic, Aided, Danielle, I see Eartha, hey Gail, hey Ms. Banks, how are you, hon? C. McKee, how are you doing? Jackie, um, you're, you are a sweet wine person and a dry wine person. I only drink sweet wines, red or white. Jackie, I drink whatever tastes good. You know, I love a red wine with red ice but my person is a little bit of a chocolate. Hey, Cracky Puerto Ricans, how are you doing? I think my sister just ate meat in one of the wine. If you guys don't know, um, Nancy is the sister for Sally to play two. She does like every Saturday at 12 noon. She does like, she's also just a great time with herself. This is over 2,000 now. It's up. And I think it's back to Puerto Rico, too. I think it's been over 2,000 in the world, too. I think it's done more than 2,000. Back to Puerto Rico and, um, has a great channel as well. It's up. Hey, Robin. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. Harry. Um, hey, Marlene. Hey, love. Yes, it's all true. Hey, Bridget. How do you register on Google? Bridget, if you um actually go on Google and you actually type in how do you register a person, it'll pop up. Okay, and as well as really you're just registering your address on Google as a business. That's how you do it. Okay. Um, let's see. Hey Lillian, how are you? Hey Deanne, Deborah, how you doing? Miss La Miss Lady D, fabulous thirty two. Hey Sean, lover energy. Thank you, Deanne, Deborah. Okay, how do you accept payment upfront for local orders if not going through Etsy? Deborah, I do Zelle and I do Vino. Okay, now in QuickBooks when they have the invoices, you could use their system where they can pay by credit card. I don't want to do that for the simple reason you got to pay a fee. Okay. And, you know, everybody's different diamonds everywhere. Okay, so I don't want to pay that fee, so I just say, um, you know, or, 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 sell it to sell it. Or sell, to sell. Sell or deal. That's how I, I do it locally. Um, okay, Mr. Sell, Mr. Popper, so, to read and get it in watery. How you doing? To do full-blown digitizing, no. I am a machinist by heart. I love working with the needles. I love working with the thread. I love working with the machine. And hooping fabric and all that stuff, that's my thing. I love doing that stuff. Digitizing, no. Don't like it. So I always hire outside. Um, let's see. Hey, Cynthia Hussman, how you doing? I wouldn't have any idea as to who to use to digitize for me. 
there are for sharing glad you finally got to watch your live hey Eleanor. hey abby um okay i see bridget i'm going down up now because i know i i skipped some of you guys um because i see that some of you guys couldn't hear me and stuff and i, I see the but i'm losing some of you guys the viewers and stuff I'm down to 77 well guys if you guys like the information that i gave you guys please give it a thumbs uh I was going to say thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Okay. No, I mean a thumbs up. All right. And stuff. So, um, could you imagine me at a winery? I'd be a lot of fun. I'm a happy drunk. I tell you that I am. I'm a happy drunk. I love going to wineries and having a good time. So, I can't hang out though with people because some, you know, you're either like a happy drunk or you're like a mad drunk. Okay. I had one girlfriend that I went with her to a winery with. And it was kind of funny because I don't know if she was going through some issues or whatever, but we were just so like, I was happy as hell. And then next thing you know, she's talking about problems, man. And I told her, I said, I
thought about, okay, when we're talking about trying to find customers, what to do, what kind of efforts you can make and all that kind of stuff to really, you know, get your, your thing going, okay? Now, of course, you know, I'm just talking about doing this as a business. wine is good it really is good i really like it and stuff i think this bottle's gonna be gone today but um wanted to share that with you guys um you know the information just in case you guys um you know oh it's still muffled all right well we're gonna call it the night then i guess jill's right we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to and stuff or we're just gonna be staring at each other you know but anyway guys give you guys the info hope um hope it helps some of you guys and stuff as always every friday um what does the underneath of your glass say oh this is actually well i gotta hurry up it says wine tasting there you go Wine tasting, fill with favorite wine, splash of ginger ale, splash of lemon and soda from Lorita. There you go. That's what it that's what it says. What's the name of the wine? Okay. It's Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant Malik. That's what it is. Yeah. It's good stuff. And it's uh 13.5 percent alcohol it's the good stuff <laughs> okay so anyway guys i am going to say good night um and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you're new to my channel Please uh, consider subscribing. And you guys know I do embroidery happy hour every Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't miss a beat. Always every Friday. I always have a new topic. If you guys have a topic that you want me to cover, let me know. I have no problems. Just put it in the comments below. Okay. And if you know the channel, subscribe and share the channel with all your friends and stuff like that. So that way, you know, we can continue growing. We can continue sharing. So, guys, have a great weekend. Love you guys all. Please um, enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there and have fun sewing and embroidering. Whatever you do, just make it great. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great night. I'll see you later. All right? Love you guys. Mwah. Bye.